Hi, welcome to Chair Chats, the lifestyle talk show with a disability twist. I'm your host, Pauline Victoria. Have you heard the term life coach? What is that and how can it be beneficial to you? On this episode, we're going to interview Liz Venendahl, a life coach who tells us more about what it's like to be a life coach and how she impacts her clients. But before we jump in, I want to remind you to please subscribe and share. I'd also like to personally invite you to my private Facebook groups called Victoriously Living and Crip Chat Club via Zoom. We meet every Saturday to have real disability talk. I also like to ask if you like what you see here, please support us at patreon.com forward slash one leg up productions. much for joining us on Chair Chats today. I'm really excited because you're a life coach. We're going to talk about everything about life coaches. Um, and I think it's important to understand what that term is and how it can benefit people, especially people with disabilities. So before we jump into that, I want to give us an opportunity to get to know you a little bit more. So if you can just share with our audience, who, who are you? Well, thank you so much, Pauline. I'm so excited to be here um, for Chair Chats. I, I just appreciate the opportunity to chat with you and your community. Um, so I'd love to share a little bit about myself. My name is Liz Benendol. I live on Long Island in New York with my husband and three awesome kids. Um, my son is eight and then I have twin daughters that are five. Um, so first and foremost, I'm a mom. <laughs> but um, I entered into the coaching field because I just kept hearing from other people that, that I was their life coach. <laughs> and prior to becoming a mom, I did work in the mental health community in my local county. And that was something that I really enjoyed just supporting other people. And since becoming a mom, I, I just wanted to find a way that I could continue to do that and also be there for my kids and give them the attention that they deserve. Um, so that felt like the right fit for me. I always laugh because I have cerebral palsy and my coaching work is done pr fully remote. So it's online or over the phone. And when I entered the coaching field, I was not thinking that um, that was going to be my niche. I didn't really know what my niche was going to be. Um, and just going through the training process and a process of self-discovery, I ultimately came through that training and just knew that I wanted to connect with other people with disabilities, such as myself. So it, I, it makes me smirk because it's the first time in my life where I could sit here and chat with you. And if I didn't want to disclose my disability, no one would ever know. Right. <laughs> um, I could... But I, I chose to do that and really put that piece of me at the forefront, and I'm so glad that I did. Can you explain life coach versus therapist or counselor? Absolutely. Um, so life coaching is not about um, giving advice to another person. It's, it's really about connecting with another human being and helping them discover those answers for themselves. And the way that a coach does that is through just really listening, connecting, and asking questions. Um, so, you know, for me as a coach, I just believe that my clients their path. They just might need some clarity in that. They just might need some time to have a dialogue and to, you know, talk through some roadblocks or challenges that they're going through. But I know that they know the answer. They know themselves better than anybody else. So they'll get there. Um, it's just the coaching process that allows them to do that. So that's really the distinction is that um, my clients, they're in the driver's seat. They're, they're creating that path and I'm just supporting them along the way and, and helping to ask the questions that will give them clarity in, in their next move. So just a distinction, who a life coach is not for is someone 
who just want someone to give them the answer. Right. So when in for individuals who, you know, may need advice, may be really want suggestions, may really need a greater level of support, um, you know, through therapy and counseling, you know, a lot of people do have counseling and also coaching. It's just a, it's just a completely different scope. Um, so that would be the main distinction is it's not therapy. When you ask someone a question and they're like, I don't know, you know, and, and, and that's not necessarily true. I, I, I love the philosophy of life coaching because you, you approach it as if you already know the answer. You just have to have someone ask you the right questions because the quality of our life is based on the quality of questions that we, we ask ourselves. So um, sometimes it's hard for us when I love um, Les Brown, he's a motivational speaker and he says, it's hard to see the picture when you're in the frame. So when I'm in my life and I'm doing my life and I'm a mom and I'm an entrepreneur and I'm a wife and bleh, all of it, you yeah. know, it's, it's really hard to, to stop and reflect and be like, wait, what do I want? What do I need? And a life coach helps bounce that back off of, off of you. Uh, absolutely absolutely and and just the value in really listening um there's something to be said for that because uh, people just want to be heard um they just really want to be understood and to have someone really just be intentional about connecting and listening um it is incredible and really life-changing for a lot of people yeah so you serve primarily clients with disabilities yes. um what benefits have you seen from helping or giving the life coaching services to people with disabilities? Mm -hmm. You know, when I, I developed my niche and I decided that that was the client, those were the clients that I really wanted to connect with. Um, I didn't really know much more than that at the time. I just knew that those were my people. And um, in having the opportunity to coach and connect with clients, the underlying theme that I have noticed among many of my clients is just being able to gain clarity and make the distinction between their limitations caused by their disability and the reality of that. I'm all about just keeping it real and being honest and, you know, it's not something we need to gloss over. It's there and it certainly impacts other areas of life and that's just the truth. But that's not the full story. And so for people to really understand that perhaps some of their thoughts are inaccurate and really limiting themselves. So those self-limiting beliefs come into play. Um, just the stigma of disability that maybe has been internalized over a number of years or through different experiences and really being able to separate that and say, okay, what what is holding you back and what are your limitations and what is in your control and what are your strengths and just being able to really grasp that allows clients to just see a whole new world in a new light and to understand that their goals and aspirations are well within their reach it's just a matter of the path that they want to take to get there could you give us an example of like a tangible example of what that might look like because I hear the words, but um, sometimes it's hard to personalize it. Helping them understand um, what experiences they've had and what can be changed about that. Um, I know that often clients, and I've had this experience myself as well, you know, just walking in the door, rolling in the door, <laughs> or however you're getting there, you immediately um, just that bit of surprise and you're, when you're going for a job, you're going to provide a service. You are going, you're going there because you're saying I'm an asset. I have a strength that I can bring to this company or organization. And for a lot of people with disabilities and a number of my clients in particular, um, that has, it's been a barrier to get past that per initial perception um, and really just be understood and heard um, as someone who has something to offer. So, um, that's, that's something that I've helped a number of clients with. And the way that we've done that is to just really go through the experience, um, 
as they would like it to be delivered and what what would you like to see happen and what would be different for you if this did happen and a lot of that comes down to just confidence building um really preparing yourself for if those certain reactions happen how can you mediate that how you how can you prepare your emotional reaction for that um how can you communicate your strengths in an effective way um and just really pumping people up and just <laughs> a lot of empowerment comes into it just saying okay i get that i've experienced that myself and that's uh, i hear what you're saying but we can get through this because you do have strengths you do have skills and if you go into that position with a positive attitude and a, a good mental state it, it just so it makes the world of difference i think as people with disabilities it's so easy to point out point to everything else as to why we are where we are in our lives mm -hmm. right like they don't want to hire me we're discriminated against mm -hmm. you know there's there's a lot that we can point to um mm -hmm. but it often distracts us from focusing on the only thing that we have control of which is ourselves and yeah. when we when we show up and I, and I know this but from experience when i was more um like meek and like uh, not really sure of who i am was and uh, you know not confident mm -hmm. uh, people interacted with me in a different way than when i showed up like you know you don't have to have arms and legs or be able to walk or whatever it is your disability is you don't have to be able-bodied to enter a room and people just know, wow, that's a good, that's a good energy right there. And yeah. the way they enter, the way they play with that energy is so different from the way they play with the other um, lower vibrational energy that, that happens. Oh, completely, completely. And I agree with what you're saying and, and that there is so much of, th that is a very strong narrative amongst the disability community is just the reality of the adversity that we face in different areas of life and, and it's real and it's there and but we as people need to know that our disabilities are what they are and that that's a fact but everything else everything else in our world in our life in our day is within our control um so it's just you know what like you said what energy are we putting out there what what are we portraying to other people about who we are yeah. um because if we have a positive attitude and go into things with a smile and just feeling prepared and confident in what we're doing no matter what it is whether you're looking you know going for a job or interacting with people at the grocery store and even perhaps needing needing a hand with something you know just knowing that that's okay everybody everybody needs support everybody needs a helping hand now and again and and needing that as somebody with a disability is no different right right and i feel like you know it's like if you own it like you yes. own who you are <laughs> all of who you are disability right. and all the other beautiful layers that make up you um when you because your comfort level is almost going to dictate their comfort level with you and i've been to job interviews where it's like i can see that they have questions and but they're afraid the legalities of having to address these questions that are real questions like how are you going to file how mm -hmm. are you how are you going to work with this mm -hmm. um you know so yeah like having like knowing well you're probably thinking and, and, and you initiating that conversation. And I know I don't have a problem addressing the elephant in the room and saying, this is, yeah, you're probably wondering how I type. Mm -hmm. let, me, let, me, let me put your worries to ease for a second. Right. Yeah. Um, and so owning yourself is, is a huge part of that. Okay, I wanna back up. Life coaching is not necessarily cheap, right? It does take some investment. Sure. And the narrative that often we can have is like, oh, that's too expensive. I don't, you know, I can't mm -hmm. afford that. Mm -hmm. But when we buy something, we're buying the value of it, right? And there's so much value in life coaching. Um, what would you say to someone who would consider a life coach, 
like they're like, oh, that's what I need. I need a life coach. I don't need the therapist. I don't need the counselor. I want to start now, like in the present. And how do I move forward to the next level? But I don't, I don't, I can't afford this amount. Um, what would you say to them to shift that narrative? That is a great question. And, and what I would say and what I have said is, you know, I, I understand the, the investment. Um, but what I would like you to think about is why you're here. What are you hoping to get from coaching? And what's the cost of not taking that step? What is that going to look like for you a month from now, three months from now, six months from now? And perhaps if you are willing to invest in yourself, then, then how can things be different? And that really, if you're able to really take some time and be mindful about that and be honest about what those two paths can look like for you, um, more often than not, you know, the value shines through. Yeah, yeah. I, I really would love to see this, that shift in narrative happening is that you're worth investing in and yeah. the investment will actually put you on a different trajectory. So if you'd like continuing on the, on the path that you're on, great. You don't need any coaching, but if you would like something different, a life coach is a viable option. And um, Liz, where could people find you if they wanted to um, work with you? Maybe they, they, they see you and you're like, oh yes, she has a disability and I want to, I have a disability and I feel more comfortable working with someone like that. Sure. Um, if individuals would like to reach out, um, I do offer a free 20 minute discovery call. We can connect. Um, they can find me on my website. It's www.lizvenendahl.com. Um, I know it's quite the name, but if you Google life coach with disability, I think I pop up, <laughs> but, um, so I'm, I can be found just on through my website and I'm also on social media, um, as life coach Liz B. Um, I'm on Facebook and Instagram. I'm, I'm working on getting, getting better with that, but I'm, I'm building a presence as we speak. <laughs> yeah. No, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. I mean, I, that's what I, that's how I found you. I, I, oh. I Googled life coach disability and to see what popped up. And I think there's value in working with a life coach that, that has a shared experience with the disability and, and that understanding. Yes. Um, and so, yeah, there weren't many out there who were coach people with disabilities and have a disability themselves. So, um, I would, if I could, I'd give you two thumbs up on that one. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right, good. <laughs> so um, I would encourage, <laughs> encourage our viewers to check out Liz Venendahl and see what she could do to help support you in your goals. Um, besides employment, are there other things that you work on with people with disabilities? So they, they kind of like, oh, that's my goal and that's what I want to work on. Yeah, um, I, honestly, I have a number of coaching certifications. So I, I am a certified professional life coach. Um, I'm a certified disaster recovery coach for individuals who may have experienced um, just a major trauma. And that can mean anything to anyone, um, you know, whether that's just the loss of a loved one or just a, just a jarring event that really um, set someone back. Um, I'm also, you know, work in the career and vocational field, but primarily uh, I can really support an individual in, in any way, uh, to be perfectly honest, because it really just depends on what my client is looking for and what their goals are. Um, I've had clients who are looking to find a relationship and, and find companionship. I've had clients who come to me and they're just don't have a level of satisfaction in their life and they don't know where to turn next. Um, and for, you know, individuals like that, I, I have tools and strategies um, that I love to work with clients on to just kind of present that, that clarity um, as to where they are in the main areas of their life and, and kind of see what makes most sense for them. Um, so I, I do, you know, have the certifications and I do have the experience and there really is nothing just from human being to human being and from my coaching experience, I, I could help many people in, in many areas of life. Yeah. And what, um, 
how long does someone normally work with you? How, what, what are your packages like? Um, typically, because coaching is goal oriented, it doesn't happen overnight. Um, so to really be able to see that growth and change, that typically needs about 90 days. So the, a three month package. Um, I do offer a one month package for individuals who, you know, want to invest their time but aren't so sure um, about signing on for the three and and more often than not clients who you know go with the one month end up just staying on with me um, for months to follow but I have a one month a three month a six month package Wow! I, and I do also offer just a, a single individual session but that's um, often for clients who I've had that just want to touch base on one more thing or just have that follow-up contact with me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Liz, you mentioned that as a life coach, you get to work from home, you get to be with your, your kiddos, you, um, it just offers a little bit more flexibility as somebody with a disability, which could be very appealing to other people with disabilities. So if somebody was considering wanting to become a life coach, what qualifications would you say are important to have in terms of being a life coach and where could they start that process? I would say the qualifications are just to have the heart for that, to connect with other people and to want to support other people. Um, and I really do find that often individuals with disabilities make amazing life coaches just because we all in our disabilities, that, that means something different for each and every one of us, no matter if we have the same condition or not. It's so unique to each of us and we see the world through a unique lens and having overcome adversities ourselves and being adaptable and facing challenges, that's something that is really an asset and such a strength um, for individuals who wanna support other people and help other people overcome the challenges in their life. I mean what's better than having a coach that's really, you know, they're walking the walk and talking the talk. I'm not just saying you can do it. I'm saying you can do it because I believe it in every sense of the word because I've overcome challenges and if I can do it, you can do it too. So um, that really is the first piece that needs to be there is just to have the heart and the desire. Um, and I am fortunate to be the director of Feller International Academy of Professional Coaching's We Live Without Limits division. Um, and that division is really dedicated to training coaches um, who have overcome adversity, who are looking to really flip the script on the narrative towards people with limitations and say, you know, we are a community that may need support, but we also have so much support to give. Um, so through We Live Without Limits, um, I have the privilege of training coaches um, and just being their point of contact and, you know, perhaps offering a little coaching in the process. And it's just so joyful to see people really find purpose in their pain and purpose in what um, has held them back in different areas of life and to use that to fuel themselves forward and help other people do the same. Yeah. It's this beautiful circle, right? And, yeah. um, you know, as a life coach, you don't have to have it all together. Like we were talking earlier, it, as life coaches, we often have life coaches. <laughs> we yes, can't do absolutely. It. absolutely. It's like, and I remember thinking to myself, even just when I had this idea, like, you know, this really feels right to me. I think I should be a life coach. And then I thought, who do I think I am <laughs> becoming a life coach? And, you know, through the training process, I just gained the, the insight and understanding that I don't need to have all the answers. I just need to have the heart and the knowledge to ask the right questions for my clients and to really listen, um, actively listen and be there for them. And so, I mean, I am a life coach and I have a life coach and I, you know, as a master trainer who trains many, many coaches from all over the world through all walks of life, I can tell you that disability or not, that's a common, that's a common feeling of just not having it together <laughs> and not knowing, um, feeling like you're ill-equipped to be in that role. And 
I'm telling you, as uh, among people with disabilities, I think that we are uniquely well equipped to be in that role. Yes, absolutely. Imposter syndrome. That's like the term for that. You don't feel like you feel like, who am I to help? Like I, I'm a mess and who am I to help the next person? But it, you know, in a way us being in our mess can actually make us a more effective coach because it allows us to be empathic to that person, that client that we're talking to, to be able to say, I totally know what you're going through. I've yeah. been there, done that, and it sucked. Mm -hmm. And what about dot, 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 right? Like <laughs> then ask a question and help them yeah. bring them back to, to where they really want to go and who they really want to be. So um, yes, I, you know, if you are, you thought this was about helping you just as a lot in your life, but you know, this is a viable option for employment for people with disabilities. I think it's brilliant. Um, mm -hmm. And it's something that I love doing too. And, and I love being able to do that from my home and hope like you're in New York, I'm in Hawaii and here we are talking life coaching and, and yep. you can help clients all over the world. Yes. Um, and so if you are looking at wanting to impact the world, and this is one way, one avenue in which you can take, um, contact Liz. We will link in the show notes um, in the description about how you can get in contact with Liz and if you are interested in becoming a life coach, um, where to start that process. So thank you so much, Liz. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you for having me. I so appreciate you sharing what you do, the benefits of, of life coaching, which, you know, in what we've just spoken about in this short time, I feel like is clarity and confidence. Mm -hmm. And yes. that is so important. So if you are watching this, I want to, again, encourage you to consider, consider having a life coach. And if you feel like Liz could be the one, that's amazing. Um, but you know, we all need help sometimes and it's okay mm -hmm. to ask for the help and then know that you're worthy of that help. Know that you're worthy of that investment. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, will, it could literally change your life. So I want to ask you, the viewer, I want to ask, ask you to comment below, what area of life would you like to level up? Let us know in the comments below. And I want to remind you to please subscribe and share and personally invite you to our Facebook groups called Victoriously Living and Crip Chat Club via Zoom, where we meet every Saturday for Disability Community Real Talk. I also want to ask if you like what you see here, please support us at patreon.com forward slash one leg up productions. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until we meet again, be blessed.